I am Ifan Atang. I am Kola, and uh, our guest this morning is Samuel Akimi Ajigoyedu, who's the CEO of Zido, uh, Africa's number one digital uh, freight broker. Good morning, um, Samuel. How are you? Yeah, good, good morning so much. It's great to be here. Nice to have you. All right, Samuel. What exactly is Zido? What does it stand for? The name Zido. Yeah, thank you so much. Zido is a digital supply chain platform. Okay. Uh, our partner with operators in the industry to what value to customers, basically. We link a uh, service provider, we link uh, operators to customers within the value chain. Okay, so when you talk about operators to customers, what kind of um, customers, uh, what kind of operators are you talking about? So what kind of customers are you talking about? Uh, we have fast moving goods, I don't want to call him. Okay. We have the multinational that uh, take in uh, a lot of raw materials, do distributions. So we handle from supply, distribution and logistic. Mm -hmm. So operators are uh, the guys that, that own those assets. So we partner with them to provide those uh, top-notch uh, value to their customers by connecting them, uh, providing technology, providing resources, and empower them to give value. Because okay, of value, okay, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Because the, one, the supply chain is a very huge market and a lot of activities involved. So what we try to do is to, uh, their documentation, their technology, their operational fund, we provide that at top, Top, uh, top of the uh, hierarchy, why they do the, the re-operation and all of that. Mm -hmm. All right, who is Samuel? Uh, let's get to meet you now. Before Zido, what were you doing? <laughs> What's your yes, thank you. thank you so much. Yes. I'm an engineer, but my own engineering started when I was small. Uh, it happens that all the school I have gone in my life, to I have represented them in a lot of research. And all I do is that I, I try to create things I think I built my first aircraft when I was seven years. Uh, really? That was, yes, seven years ago. Well, that was already moving. And I represented my primary school. I represented my university in research and development. And some of the things that I do today, I have done them when I was small. Mm. And some of them, I even have patent for them. So it's not that, I, it's just an hobby. Uh, and that's why you see, even as I'm a businessman today, I secreted a new product recently called Arnold. So you see that it's, it's just, innovation is part of me. I enjoy it. I like doing it and I love solving problems. And I love what I see when they come out, how they appear. And I also love the fact that people appreciate them when they give them value that they, that they really want. Mm -hmm. So uh, all my life I've been an engineer. My father was an engineer and an engineer and a businessman. So I also a businessman. Since when I was in school, I've already been doing a lot of projects teaching people on project, developing prototypes while I was in the universities, uh, up to PhD prototype, I was doing that. And so when I left uh, the university, my first uh, research and development project that I uh, represented the school with, when the school was number one in, in that research fair, was my first project when I, when, when I, my first business that I started, which was basically, uh, fleet management applications. Okay, so you never worked in a corporate space straight from university. I, I work, I work, but I work in a very unique way. I work as I was brought in as a director. Mm. Okay, as time I was coming in, the company was uh, somebody left that was very huge and they couldn't get a replacement. But at that time, I was in Lagos Business School and Scholarship, thanks to Diamond Bank. Sorry, thanks to the sponsor then. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was I was in the school. So one of the uh, my mentor in the school who had interest in me approached me and said, "I know that you don't want to work with anybody, but I know a company that if you work with them, you also invest in what you do, and so you have two value." So I was brought in as a director, and I remember that we have a lot of company owing us then. Uh, when I stopped the problem, within two weeks, I wasn't sleeping. Other people could not do what I was doing because my own is not about the money. I, uh, I don't like the fact that those machines were lying and follow. 
mm. when I can fix them. So I don't like the fact that I can't fix them. So I need to fix them. And the other guys were still saying that we need to go to our blog to learn. I said, I don't need training. I can see the machine. I need to make this work. And I remember that we have a lot of receivers that was just coming in. So, you know, the, the MD, the CEO, they just loved what I was doing and I was appreciating it. You know, for me, it wasn't working. I was just enjoying it. They wouldn't know, yes, I was well paid and I was giving everything that, that's required. Uh, even much more than somebody that just coming out from school. So I was not treated as a new intake. I was treated like his director. Okay, so the only thing I realized then was that I need to improve my management skills. I have the technical skills. I understand what I need to do. So that is when I have to go to Harvard, go to Kennedy School, go to Stanford, go to as much school as, as I could. And I remember that time my MD called me. So why are you studying so hard? <laughs> you want to become a politician? <laughs> and I, I, I told him that there will be a time that I may not have time to study. This is the best time to study. Yes. And so it's working what, for you now. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. so, so at what point did, did you birth um, Zido? And what, what drove you to it? Yes, we, we, I have a previous company that was into logistics. Okay. And we'll, we'll look at the value chain of logistics in Africa, in Nigeria, the challenges are much. From the bad role, from the unorganized uh, process, even from the customer side. So there's a lot of things that are not, that are broken within the value chain. And it's making people to lose a lot of money and a lot of focus. Because logistics itself is not for everybody. It's for strong men and strong women that we have to put all their effort. And if they have to move those goods or do the supply or provide those services, at the same time, still have to worry about funding, still have to worry about documentation, still have to worry about technology, still have to worry about training, so you have to worry about insurance, risk and all of that. It's too much for them. So, so I have experience and I know how difficult it is. And I know how much we lost because we could not see where to leverage on. So that's why we created a leverage platform, okay? That allow you to focus on your core business. Why we help you with technology, we help you with, with operational fund, we help you with, with training, we help you with ins insurance, all the, all the top line solutions. Why are you focus on that line trying to make things happen? So when you talk about um, freighting now, if you, know, you kept talking about value chain. So basically you deal with wholesale. It's not like um, you, do your, you, you help um, business deliver to individuals. It looks like it's more of a distributorship kind of thing you're doing. That's what it sounds like. Or you deal with small businesses as well. Uh, like, we, what, we do, what we do basically is B2B, okay? Uh -huh. uh, we don't do the retail side of uh, uh, the supply chain. We focus more on the B two B, which most times happen to be the big shot. Even, but we have the other side. We have the smaller B two B who are providing services, but don't have infrastructures, don't have access to funding, don't have access to technology and all of that. And these guys are really good at their work, but they don't need, they don't need this top line support. So those are the people we we support to provide value to these big companies. Hmm. What would you say sets you apart from others in the field? One thing uh, for us is that we love what we do. It's what we value. And uh, another thing that we have also done is that we operate in horizontal. We don't always do, okay, we don't do all the supply. We don't do all the services. We, also, we do everything within the value. We do, we do basically supply. We do uh, logistic. I was also just distribution. So we work within the value chain. So uh, that one help us to have a larger coverage uh, and also help us to understand the entire value chain and to know where the value, where best for us to capture the value. So we have this opportunity, but still the same model, but operate with, with different operation within the value chain, operate within the value chain. Okay. So starting out, um, what was it like funding the business or you had already started saving for this? Because you, know, you said you've done several, several businesses or did you plow back profit from the other businesses into this? Or how, how, how did you do that? Uh, I, I have this philosophy, which I, I think uh, the same thing uh, my dad also did, okay? He's 
which I, it has always worked for me, have believed in zero financing. What is zero financing? Zero financing simply means if you can control demand, you could get anything done. Okay? Mm. If let's give an example now. If you if your uh, company, let's let's assume that you're a company, okay? And if you want me to supply you maybe something worth one billion naira, okay, that's the most important thing for me. Because I have a contract that already says you supply me. So I have the demand. Everything will fall in place. So the mistake people go is to pursue the money before the demand. Mm. Demand makes things happen. So the first thing to do is to go after the demand. Somebody who wants to use your product, who's ready to pay. If you have that, you have 99% almost there. So, but people try to go and say, okay, I want to do $1 billion contract. They are looking for $1 billion. No, it doesn't work that way. And that's been the problem. So this method has worked for me all my life. When I started my first company, the first thing that happened that I have a company, thanks to my friend who links me to a company, who needed my service. And they placed a big order. And they also pay upfront. And from there, I, I make the first uh, design, I supply was the free management solution, and then make a payment to my account. Mm -hmm. And from zero already really very, very big value. So sometimes I keep telling people, stop changing the wrong thing. Go after the man. If you have the demand in your heart, everything will fall in place. But Thank some of people are not trusting. You know, you talked about you being paid upfront and uh, uh, you it was paid into your account, you were able to deliver the service. Some people would be like, I want to see what you have for me first because I want value for my money. And you know, if you are in that situation, how do you how do you manage it? You know, you know the, 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 the mistake a lot of people uh, people make is that they don't understand the power of social media. They don't understand the power of visibility. Like what you guys are doing today is is one of the great visibility everybody needs. Mm -hmm. When you have to tell people that you know what you're doing, see, it's not about the See, the mistake people are making is not about the amount of money that you have. It's about the knowledge that you have, about the information that you have with you and the skills that you have. And how do you display that? How do you display that? It's by using different platforms to show skills. I've started using LinkedIn since I was in uh, university. I've started using Facebook since for a very long time. Okay, I came into Instagram very late. But you see, for all the way in business, there's no reason why you shouldn't be on LinkedIn. There's no, there's no reason why you shouldn't display yourself. There's no reason why you shouldn't put out content. When you put out content, the perception is this. Whatever content you put, it's the value that you have. So people see you like your content. So what I have done so well is this. I can tell you, and I, without making a mistake, I can show the screenshot of what I used to close my first day on LinkedIn to you. It only happened in 24 hours. I remember I came down from uh, California, I entered Lagos, and I went to my LinkedIn, and I sent a mail. And he said, Sam, you, I would like to meet you. How are you? Can we meet you with Baker? And the next thing we, we, we went, and the next thing the contract came out. And then and the next thing, see, this, this, see he's, the guy does not just know me in that day that I'm sending that mail. The guy has been following me. Yes. They have been seeing what I'm doing. He already have a perception of me. So when I'm asking something, it's not finding it difficult to believe me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's selling yourself. So <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Sorry, my voice is my voice is not so good. It's okay. Hope, hope you can still hear. We can yeah, hear we, you. We, we, can, we can hear you. So, so, what are your routes and your destinations? And what countries are you, you know, operational in? Where do you go? Where do you not go? Yes, we still have some uh, little pressure in some African country and uh, China, uh, U.S. and all of that. The idea of, oh, for me, what I realized as a businessman is that for you to effectively scale, you need to be able to adapt your product to different markets, mm. okay? It, it's not supposed to be exactly the same thing. You need to, because the truth is that whether you believe it or not, it's about making money, it's about capturing value. You need to give a service to somebody who's able to pay you. That's the key thing for everything, and that's what sustain every business. So if you are going anywhere, you need to understand where you're going. You need to understand the kind of value. It might not be exactly. See, in Africa, the major problem that everybody has is access to funding. 
Yeah. Okay, but that does not happen in the US. So what other value can you provide? So what we're doing is that we have different uh, variation for every market so that we can scale as much as possible. So the idea is that we want to provide value across the globe. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, we'll take a break on Business Half R. We'll be right back. Do stay with us. 97.3. Welcome back. It's still Business Half Hour here on Classic FM 97.3, station of plays every song you know. Once again, I am Ifai Atama. And I am Bukola. We have in the studio with us Samuel Ajiboyede. He's the CEO of Zito, and it's, a, it's Africa's number one digital freight broker. So we are talking about your business and how it started. Now tell us about your star strength. What is it like working with you? Yeah, because, because of the kind of model we run, we have to be uh, reasonably uh, light as possible. So uh, if you look at the cumulatively with uh, partners, uh, let me go uh, engaging, the, not directly employing them. We have a total of, let's say, 100, including our own. But our main just have is just a little bit above, above 20. Okay, just so um, do you work remotely or? You, you're in the office, one can come to your office to you know, um, inquire Ooh. about your business. We adapt a uh, hybrid model because we realize that uh, it's more effective when you let people have their way, comfortable and all that. So as you can see me, I'm one of now, one of our offices can see that empty. Mm. Even though I've locked them outside that they have to wait for me to <laughs> 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 so they don't disrupt the whole show. Yes. <laughs> what are your biggest challenges? So, so what basically is that we realize that they are more effective when they work from home. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, I realize that it's now now value driven. It's project based. We we'll give you a task. How long does it take you to provide this task? I will see that it's working. I will consider that. So we give them an option. Some people don't want to stay at home. Yeah. Okay. Some people want to stay at home. And we have some people that are using only twice a week. Mm. So we make it as flexible as possible. But whatever it is, you have to communicate and you have to abide by the policy. Uh, as long as you're not after that, we're fine. And I can tell you we have better results. Mm. Okay. We have better results. Okay. Uh, what are your biggest challenges now? Uh, I think, what will I say is the biggest, I think funding is uh, one of the, the challenges that everyone faces at every stage. But the good thing is that we have been able to work with a lot of debt, okay? Because of the track record with the bank, or it's always good to, if you have uh, more equity coming in, which we're working on already, uh, but we have gotten a lot of funding to debt. Uh, we're looking at more of equity so that we don't do uh, too much of, de of debt. But but one thing for us is that we're fine because the most utmost thing in any business is making profit. Okay, if you're making profit, then you're sustainable. But it's also good if we can have more equity coming in. So that another thing is that, uh, I think uh, for us at the niche stage, what we made sure we had was being able to get the right technology that we need to get our work. Uh, but right now we are uh, getting above that. Um, there's a question for you here. It says, um, can you don't work with startups and are you into coaching logistics and storage too? Come again, please. Can you don't work with startups and are you into cold chain logistics and storage too? No, no we're not really doing that yet but but you see the way uh zero is going to work is that it's going to work with every uh the value chain eventually so but what we do is that we're taking one step at a time uh we said the value chains are big and huge so we want anyway we, we operate we want to give our best and eventually we uh, go within the value chain 
there's another question it says um, please share the guest business name and website oh my the website is zero.co yeah. zero.co zero. 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 so zero tell us how do you handle competition who are your competitors what has it been like in the past uh, it says the last year was very an interesting time for us because and that's that's the best time we tested our model to see whether what what are fit. One of the things that we we've realized that we the way we are designed is to allow everybody within the value chain to partner with us. So virtually everybody that is within the value chain have something to do with us, okay? Because of the kind of model we run, and I'll give you an example. We have what we call franchise model, we have joint operation model. Okay. The franchise model is when you operate with zero name. You, you work with your customer or with our customer using zero name. Okay? okay. Then we have the joint operation who allows you to use your name to work with the customers. So it's we find it that everybody is here. Somebody wants to promote his brand, will need our resources we still work with us. Someone who doesn't really want to promote his brand, all he wants to do is to make profit, still want to work with us. So it, it gives us a big, a big opportunity to be able to walk across the value chain. So we realize that people that work with as a competitor, they're also using our platform. So, so, we, so there are a lot of people that are using our platform, but because we are at the back end, because the way we partner, we're not, we're not displaying our brand as joint operator, you might not even know we're working with those guys. Mm -hmm. But there are some other people that they're using our brand to operate. So that allows us to, to work with virtually everybody. Okay, but the, the, the whole thing is that as you're working within the value chain, everybody's working. We just get a commission for our service. So we're just like a layer that everybody can tap into and drive value to their customers. It does appear like it's it's very simple to use. How does it work, you know, from the point of contact uh, to Zido to to delivery? How does it work? Yes, yeah, it's actually a contact based transaction. Okay. What does a contact based transaction mean? We have to sign contracts, you know, and when this contract are signed, it's actually a loop. It's a loop that it continues going. Okay, what is transaction cycle? Maybe two weeks. So we keep running those transfer cycles. Okay, you supply. So it, it's not the way we want is that we create a system for every customer, an account for every customer. So if you are someone who's supply a company and that happened every two, two weeks. So your transaction cycle is two weeks and the make payment within one week, all of that. So we'll have created our transaction cycle and provide resources that in turn continuously providing those resources. So we'll create an account and a budget for you as our customer, as our partner. So you don't run out of resources. All you need to focus on is providing this value. So now um, you talk about scaling up the other time. Yeah. Uh, Zudo was created in 2017. Yes. So it's three years old now. Uh, <laughs> right, well, please. Right, it's three years old. So what, what, where do you see Zido in the next five years? What are your plans for Zido? What, where do you want to take this bill to? Uh, we started in 2017 mm -hmm. uh, as uh, on a different model. Our reason was going to change last year, okay? In 2020, we focused more on uh, supply chain last year. Initially, we were doing last mile delivery. So, but this one we're doing now, we started last year. So we are above a year right now. Okay. And we're looking at it that in the next five years, we will have it everywhere. Okay. And the way we operate is that we don't really uh, look at, because I studied global uh, strategy in Harvard, and I realized that the same effort I would take to set up in Kenya to take it to center up in Germany. It just it just just assumed that we are talking now. We're not in the same room. If I was in the US, the same thing will have happened. Mm. So if you see everywhere as just an imaginary world, you can go everywhere. Just make sure that you're doing within the law, the, the legal framework without in that environment. 
Then you can go everywhere. So we see ourselves going everywhere uh, around the globe that we know we can give value and get value for ourselves. Well, what are your most, most profitable markets? Hmm. Wow. <laughs> The market is big. I think for us, the logistics market is very rich. Mm. Uh, that's where we, yeah. let me give you why I say it's very rich. In a single transaction, you'll be looking at a very big figure, just one transaction. Yeah. Okay, in the supply side, it's not as huge a transaction like the logistics side. That's the movements of goods. Okay, you're moving goods from Lagos to Kano, you know, you're carrying 60 ton, that is huge. Mm. A single transaction has a huge uh, amount of money you're going to get rolling in, okay? Even though you are going to just, just get a commission, okay? But the other side, so it's that, that's part. Then again, moving uh, container is also very, uh, a very lucrative market also, okay? Especially through the waterway. Uh, when we use the waterway, it's a, a very good market. Waterway is also a very good market. So there's everywhere, there's, 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 there's value to be captured everywhere. You just have to be creative about it. Uh, you don't have to do everything. You just have to do the one that you know you can give your best and get the right value for it. So for anybody starting out who wants to work in your shoes, what would you tell the person the kind of business you're doing? Uh, I think for everybody starting out, the first thing that I want a person to have is to have a survival strategy, okay? It's so a strategy, you see people give up because they don't have a survival strategy. Okay, you are working in a company. I, I remember when I started my first company, what was my survival strategy? I bought two Marwa. I was giving me 15, 15,000 every week, okay? So I knew that in the first part of my business, I may not have money for even one year or more, but I will be going out, talking to customer, trying to get people, I will be on social media, how to buy data, how to do a lot of things. So you need to have a solar strategy. And I also have a friend who they started a company together. One was working, one was not working. So you need to have a survival strategy because see, when you don't have fuel to move, you eventually give up. But so the Marat helped me throughout until I got my first contract that was able to take me to the next contract. And that's how the growth started. So the first thing you need to have to have a survival strategy in place. Second is that. Try to build the right, don't rush, because this time around now you have something that's keeping you. So build the right product, take your time to build it, but don't, don't rush to grow. I can tell anybody, growth is the most easiest in anything. People don't know that. Growth is the most easiest, if you have money, you will grow. Okay, all you need to do is to raise money and grow. The first thing is to get a product that the market accepts, and everybody wanna use. Get the product right, take your time and build the right product. And if you need a skill set, Get the right skill set on time. If you're when you are young, don't wait. Get the right skill set. I'll get the right partner that can give you the right skill set on time, so that it help you reduce your cost at the initial stage. And don't rush to employ people. Don't rush to employ people. Take your time. Take your time. Grow. Learn as much things as possible. Later, you can start getting people bit by bit. Just take it okay. easy. All right, uh, time is not our friend here. Um, uh, we're, we're running out of time now. Uh, but before we let you go, I uh, would like to ask you, what is that guiding light, that quote that guides you when you wake up in the morning? What's that thing you hear in your head that just tells you that you can face the day? Basically, I, I believe that the world should be a better place. Okay, and the only way we can do is to contribute our own, to make our own little impact as much as we could. So all I want to do is that... Uh, when I come to my office, I want to see everybody smiling. And when I'm working, I want to make a little impact. If everybody keep making impact within their own reach, the world will be a better place. So we keep making impact. And the best, one of the best way to make impact is to create good products and services. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so it's all about creating good products and services for you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Samuel, for coming. Look alive, you say so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Have a lovely day. And you too. Have a wonderful Thank you for having me. All right. Bye -bye. No problems. Thank you.